With Doug Robertson, Page High School varsity football coach. Coach just finished practice. What kind of practice was it today? What kind of things did you get done today? Well, you know, we could add, add, you know, shoulder pads a day. Obviously, still can't have contacts. So that's a little frustrating uh, for the guys and in some ways the coaches. But just continuing to get conditioning in and uh, staying where we need to be uh, and obviously putting in our scheme. So it's a lot of scheme work. A lot of condition this week. Not, some, you know, obviously we can't do contact, so it's not. We're not finding about finding out about all about physicality right now. So it's mainly things like that. Have you taken a lot of steps forward over the past couple of years? You feel this program's growing now, don't you? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, first year we were in the 50s total program. Last year I think we finished with 62, won a few ball games, and then now this year I think on the roster I have 90, about 90 kids out. So about 50 on the varsity and about 40 on the JV. So obviously it's building, it's growing, and we have better football players. You know, with more numbers, we got a better chance to have more better, you know, better football players in that number. And I think we certainly have that. So I'm excited about our young guys. We've got a good young group and excited about the older guys that have now played thir this is their third year in this program, a lot of them, and uh, excited about what they could become this year. And you've had some guys that have been in the program. They've grown with the program, too, in the past couple of years. They've gotten better. They've gotten stronger, quicker, faster, all the things you want. Yeah, I mean, this is the first year we've had a whole offseason to really build that, you know, and that's a big part of our program. Uh, our guys running track in the offseason. We had the biggest track team we've ever had here, to my knowledge. Um, and then the weight room is a, a daily thing that we're grinding them every day and in the summer. Uh, so that's, I think we look like, not only we have bigger numbers, we look different as a football team. So I think that'll be noticeably different when people see it, see a Page football team this year. When you get the, the system going, do you see it being a two quarterback system again this year? Uh, it depends. Right now, Marquise Lewis and Nick Williamson are in a fierce competition on number one quarterback. And Marquise has kind of pushed that. Marquise has really had a good camp in summer and preseason. So uh, both of them we feel like we can win with. So it's just, a, it could be two quarterbacks, or it could be one of them. I don't, I'm, it's too early to tell. And um, and Jerron Blackwell could also play quarterback still too. So we really have three guys that we think we can win with uh, at a high level. It's just a matter of who kind of gets ahead of the ahead of the sticks a little bit. It's good to have that experience with uh, Williamson and Blackwell. They got a lot of experience rotating some last year. They did. And uh, so we, like I said, quarterback situation is the best it's been since we've been here. We feel, like I said, we feel like we could have three guys we could win with. And gives us a little more flexibility receiver if we wanted to play Jerron there. Um, and even Marquise there can play some receiver. And Nick can play receiver. So whoever doesn't win the job has a good chance to help us at receiver and um, add depth to that position as well. I would think Jerron Blackwell, he'll probably be on the field just about all time during the entire season if he's available, right? Yes, he's, uh, you know, right now he's on defense force in the, in the first 11, I think, uh, free safety. But certainly he's going to play some offensive snaps. You know, early on when it's so hot, you know, you try to limit those um, as much as we can. But we got to make sure he's on the field as much as possible for Paige to be successful. We do we do think we got guys can go in for people like Duran and other people. Uh, so I think we're deeper than we've been. You know, we're not going to lose a whole lot with twos as much as we have in the past. What about a guy like Paul Thompson? Will he be the top running back? We also have to play some linebacker too? That's kind of a similar situation as Duran. Uh, probably he's a starter on defense and inside linebacker, but he also has to play tailback, similar to Trayvon last year a little bit. But again, we got some guys at tailback that's really stepping up. DeMonte Brown is going to be a good player for us. Um, Maurice Andrews is a good player for us. Christian Browns. Uh, didn't play a lot of running back last year because he was a DL as a freshman. So didn't want to give him too much. Now he can play some tailback. So we feel like we got some options there behind PJ if he needs a break. And I guess uh, lineman wise, uh, Tremel Hester, and even your son, Tate Robertson, those guys have experience. Those guys are some of the guys you want to build upon as far as the linemen go, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to the end of the year, we have four of those really, and really all five back um, in a lot of ways. We have Elijah McCray going left to right. We've got Elijah McCray, Tramiel Hester, Tate Robertson, Jack Kepley, and uh, London Abernathy all started against Huff down in the playoffs. So that can only help us going forward. And we feel really good about those first five. Right now we're trying to find guys behind them where we can develop depth if one of those guys go down or maybe one of them has to play defense, you know. So we want to make sure we're, we're covered there. So we're, we spend a lot of time with our twos 
trying to get them up to date because some some of those guys hadn't played football here in his first year playing here. I guess you coach the staff a little different this year too. You told me Coach Bagamary's at Eastern Guilford assistant coach Mills, yep. went over to Walker Town head coach. So you had yep. to kind of rebuild the coaching staff a little bit too, I guess. Really have. I mean, we got some new coaches. So on the defensive side of the ball, uh, familiar faces are Coach Nimmons and Coach Hagen and Coach Han. Uh, new guys are Coach Searcy at inside backers and Coach Allen Jones at uh, outside backers. Glad to have those two join the defensive staff. Offensive staff, familiar faces will be Coach Baldwin at running backs, myself at O-line, and Coach Hopkins at O-line. Um, and then some new faces, uh, Coach Nick Makovic, who played center here. Oh, yeah, big Nick. Uh, yeah. Back, way back, a little bit back. Just got done at Carolina and wanted to help out, so he's going to help out with OL, too. Uh, and then receivers, we've added Matt James. He's really been good for us. And then a guy that had been here, he couldn't coach the last couple of years, is Coach Jacob Sykes. He's going to coach the quarterback. So excited about our whole staff. They're really working hard and um, and make me look good when, I, when I'm at my best, for sure. What about uh, going back to the old coaching days you first got going many years ago? Who did you kind of look to as being your coaching mentor? Who did you kind of pattern yourself after when you got into coaching? Well, uh, I guess a far guy, I always, always respected. I was a Washington Redskins fan, so I was Joe Gibbs guy growing yes, up. Sir. I loved Joe Gibbs. I thought he was the best thing since sliced bread. And then when I got into my actual professional life nearby here, Coach Jimmy Teague at Reedsville and Earl Bates, who's now at Southeast, those guys coached me. Uh, Lynn Stadler, who was former coach at uh, Rockingham and Moorhead, coached me. Those are guys I respected as my coaches and really got me into this business. And then Coaching under Coach Teague after playing for him was a, was an honor, and uh, we were able to be pretty successful at Regional. And he always looked up to the way he did things, and uh, always thought he did a really good job of putting the right people on the field and how he recognized those, and certainly tried to carry that on with our program and how we run ours and playing your best players on defense. I think that's always been a trademark of his teams, and boy, we've tried to do it here wherever I've been, whether I've been at Eastern Thomas or here or Regional. I think the thing you told your players as you were closing practice today might be one of the most important things. You got to take that first step, each day, step out, get out of bed, take that first step forward, and you're ready to go, right? Yeah, I mean, there's some good things about practice in the morning. Obviously, it's cooler, the thunderstorms aren't as prevalent, so you feel like you get most of your practices in. That's why we do it for safety reasons, for lightning and heat and stuff like that. So that's the reason. But the negative, I don't think it's a negative. I don't mind. I like getting up early, but some of these kids have to get out of bed. When all their buddies are not playing football, sleeping in, playing PlayStation and all that stuff, they've paid the price of coming out here. And I talked to them about how special they are, you know, a group of people that they are. And if you get that first foot out of the bed and put it on the ground, you have a chance to get here. And so when you wake up, get that foot on the ground, let's get to work. And that's kind of how we pattern ourselves. Coach, great job today. Keep up the good work. Look forward to seeing you during the season. Thank you. Appreciate it, Andy, and all you do at Greensboro Sports.